In this next section, what we're going to talk about is regions. Now, regions in a theme specify an area on the page where blocks can display. Now, if we jump to our Drupal site and we go to the structure menu item and go to blocks, what you'll see here is a hierarchical list where the top item right here, left sidebar, right sidebar, content, header, footer, highlighted, all of these represent a region. These regions display on different parts of the page and are typically named in a way to make it easy to tell where they're located. For example, left sidebar is pretty straightforward. Inside of here, we have a set of blocks that will display inside of this region. Now this is normally the, the way that you would be exposed to regions through the Drupal user interface. But modules can also use regions in order to specify where they're going to put certain content. So they can modify that later on. The regions can also be rearranged or the blocks inside of a region reordered through various hooks as well. So this simply gives us a way to organize content in a meaningful way and allow them to be manipulated later on. The way we specify regions inside of a theme is through the .info file. And so we're going to look at how to do that and what the effects are of adding, removing, and hiding regions. So go ahead and go to your resource pack directory. And in it, what we're going to do is open up the third step, which is bat.info regions.step. And make sure that your current bat.info file is open. Go ahead and copy all of the code from the step file and paste it over the code that's currently in your .info file and save it. So what we've added here in this .info file is a region setting right here. We've added a header, content, footer, and then a region's hidden item here, which will hide the footer region from being displayed in the block settings page. Now, if we don't specify any regions here like we had before, then Drupal will use the default region set, which you can find if you're curious by looking at the system.module file, but you can also go to the block settings page and see what regions are available, at least the visible regions. Now, as soon as we specify region options inside of our theme, then we override those defaults. So since we're only specifying three regions here and the default Drupal theme base has more regions than that, then any blocks that are associated with the other regions will automatically be moved into the disabled section. And we'll have to re-enable those and add them to the regions that we're adding in order to have them display. So let's go ahead and activate these regions by saving our .info file and then clearing our theme registry and rebuilding it. So I've saved it here. Now I'm going to jump to the browser. And what I'm going to do is scroll to the top and I'm going to clear the cache. This time, because I'm using admin menu, I'm just going to hover over the home button and click flush all caches. It'll take just a moment. And when it's done, we'll see an alert at the top of the page of our block settings page that said the block search form was assigned to the invalid region sidebar first and has been disabled. And we see a few alerts like this. What this means is that just like I previously mentioned, because the sidebar first region isn't added in our .info file, Drupal has to decide where it's going to put that block that was previously enabled for that region. And so what it's doing is just disabling it for now. And now if we scroll down and we look at the regions available to us in our block settings page, we have header, content, and disabled. And notice as we scroll down, we don't see any footer option. And that's because we have it specified as hidden inside of our .info file. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at how these regions are actually rendered through the page.tpl.php file. So go ahead and jump back to your sites directory and in your theme directory, sites, all, themes, bat here, let's go ahead and open up the page.tpl.php file, which we copied from the system module in Drupal core. Okay, 
So in this page at the very top, we have a bunch of information about the variables that are available to us in this template. If we scroll down to the very bottom, we'll see a section called regions. This section describes what each region is and how it fits into the scheme of the template. So for example, the help is the dynamic help text, mostly for admin pages. The content is the main content for the current page. Now notice that the regions are prefaced with the page variable and it's an item inside of the page array that we're grabbing. So instead of it being region and then the brackets, it's page and then the brackets. Now when these are actually used inside of the code, what I'm going to do to, to demonstrate this is do a search for the, in the page for the dollar sign page variable and we're going to look at the page with these highlighted so we see them all highlighted right here and then as we scroll down we'll see them highlighted. Here's our first rendered region and notice that it's in PHP tags, print, and then we're running page header through the render function. Now page header is actually a render array which contains an array, a nested array of information about each block that's inside of the region as well as details about theming each item inside of that block. Now this is helpful because this region will get passed to any pre-processing functions so if, for example, you would like to rearrange the order of blocks or change some of the content in it right before it hits the template file, then you can do that inside of your template.php file, which we're going to be talking about in a little bit. So the important parts to note here is that we're using the page variable, the item inside of it is the name of the region, and we're running it through the render function and then we're having to explicitly print that out to the page. So this is a full rendering of a region. Let's go ahead and scroll down and look at the other examples of the rendered regions. Here we have an if statement checking to see if there's any content inside of this region, simply by checking to see if the variable has any data. And then if so, it's going to go ahead and print the region and notice in this case there's a div surrounding the region highlighted and then we're just doing the print render highlighted item inside of the page variable and then we're ending the if statement. If we scroll down we'll see that here we're rendering the help region, here we're rendering the content, let me scroll down a little bit more we're doing an if statement again to see if there's any content inside of the sidebar because if so we want to display the wrapper content around it if not we want to not display these items so we can't just do like at the top where we did just a simple print render header because with the header we don't have any additional content that we need to wrap around it but here we do so we're wrapping it in an if statement and then rendering it and then we have the same thing for the second sidebar and then we have the footer content down here. So as you can see regions are pretty simple. It's a three-step process. Our first step is adding a region in our .info file by using the regions variable and simply specifying it. If we want to hide it we can do so by adding it to the regions hidden variable as well in the info file. And then we just add content to the region through the blocks interface in the Drupal configuration. And finally, to render the region, we add a render function with the page variable and the specific region specified in that page variable inside of our page.tpl.php file. And if we want to conditionally display some wrapper content around that particular region, we can simply do an if statement checking to see if there's content inside of that region.